Salutations, Utopians. Global here. Hope you're getting through the week just fine. I know it's Friday. Some of y'all recovering from uh, Halloween. Um, other of us recovering from that crazy 9 to 5 schedules, entrepreneur schedule, whatever. Industry shutting down. TGIF, thank goodness, it's Friday. So, um, not to unpack here on this particular topic, I want to discuss on the association watching uh, Knicks Pistons and uh, Celtics uh, Hornets and uh, you know I, I like the Hornets though they they are nice and all that but you know I figure I'll get this video off right now uh, while I'm wide awake um, so we've been we've been hearing so much discussion about the Milwaukee Bucks and Giannis first he's the one implying that you know he could be traded if this season doesn't get any better and uh, if, if they don't get the results they're seeking. And then uh, CBS reporter reader uh, stated that, you know, the Milwaukee, that, that Giannis could force his way out. I don't know if it's like, first of all, I don't know what was the need for the double down, but the way on Thursday morning they were sensationalizing this story from this particular CBS reporter I'm like, are you saying he's going to get traded at the trade deadline? Otherwise, why are we talking about, you know, what's going to happen after the season? And we got an 82-game schedule. We're four games in, and we still got the in-game, in-season tournament. Not to mention you got the play-in. And, like, we're already talking about what's going to happen at the end of the year. Like, like, do I need to remind people that the core nucleus of the Milwaukee Bucks have won a championship? And, you know, you can count on your hands, literally, from like 32, 33 up, how many veterans we have in this league. But, like, last time I checked, when you've won a championship, you get afforded a certain level of uh, frequent flyer mile courtesy, um, so to speak, and the mile high club, where you're not obligated to dominate in the regular season anymore. That's not the barometer for you. If you look statistically, Giannis is doing historical numbers throughout the first five. Yes, Dame is lost. Yes, that but you know, and, and everyone else around the team has got a funky aura. They are missing an Olympian and Chris Middleton and one-time champion who had just as much to do with them winning a championship as anybody. Yes, Giannis included. But it's like we're five games in, and it's just it's tragic because. You know, they were talking about the NBA ratings being down. And social media is now the number one source for where people get their news. Let's just call a spade a spade. No matter how much they try to stream these games on certain exclusive rights and all this other stuff, social media is where people are getting their news. And it's just really sad that pro sports is ran by people who knew how to play the social media game and have large followings but who may or may not necessarily have an extreme passion or hunger for the games itself. So you got people who are just uh, uh, sensational, you know, sensationalizing news uh, as what we call banger hunting online to get, you know, the most clicks and impression. And it's like, are you aware we're five games in and teams have a right to like kind of sort through things and figure things out coming off an Olympic uh, summer? coming off of people getting married and getting, you know, which is what happened with Giannis and other guys are out, you know, exploring different habits and, uh, and you know, and, and vacationing and things like that. You know, Dame trained with David Goggins this off season. And to me, it's just like, wow, the narratives that are controlled because someone has a large social media following and how much it tarnishes the game. And because... Like, we're really playing virtual GM in six games. Like, you really have people reciting f stats. First five games of a season ever. What the hell does that even mean these days, bro? It's a race, not a marathon. And, you know, then you got these these revisionist history, history makers who are like, oh, the team was so much better with Adrian Griffin as the head coach. They were like 35 and something in the below double digits. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, Dog, anybody who really remembers the year that before Doc took over for Adrian Griffin, there's a reason he took over for him. 
They weren't playing championship style ball. You're like, yeah, y'all winning games, but this doesn't look right. I love the position the Milwaukee Bucks in. While y'all praising, you know, Boston, who had an easy path to the finals, like a lot of these conveniently last couple years, these championship teams from Denver to Golden State to Cleveland, all having like these favorable paths to the finals, which is nowadays just as important as talent once you get to the postseason. It's just amazing to me that, you know, how quick people like you know it's more important somebody it's more no there's so many games to be played it's crazy to me to think that like we're really trying to decide stuff right away i don't think the celtics have the grit or the physicality to match the bucks that's you know if the, in a seven game series that's their kryptonite styles win fights and when you can throw Giannis on Tatum and then you can throw Middleton on Jalen Brown, who's already limited offensively, and then it's a showdown between Dame and Drew Holiday, ironically, who were kind of like all a part of the summer where the like guys were playing musical chairs and moving around. Because I got news for you. You know, yes, Drew Holiday's won a championship since. Yes, De J Drew Holiday has played in uh, and won a gold this summer since being traded from Milwaukee. That doesn't take away the fact that Dame in the big picture is more of what they needed. And we haven't had the privilege to really see this unit cohesively join forces and become really all that they can be. Because when you have the paint crowd and everything, Dame launching it from 35, and you got 7'1 Lopez, 7' foot Giannis, 6'10 Middleton, them alone rebounds are not a problem anymore. Not to mention you got Tareen Prince, who's 6'8", who's one of my favorite offseason signings up there with Mason Plumley for the Phoenix Suns because the Suns, you know, have trouble with point guards and stuff. Well, they went and got quietly one of the most underrated passing big men in the NBA to solve some of that ball flow. Plus, they don't have to depend on Nurkic, who mentally has gotten a lot weaker over the years from all the injuries and just having a spot, you know, uh... Having being removed from his block in Denver in favor of you know the three time one uh, three time MVP one time champion Nikola Jokic, um, so it really it really is a thing for me where I'm like, okay, I'm watching all this unfold and I'm like, right, boom. If you're the Bucks, you're in the perfect slot because it's the wounded warrior thing. Nobody's favoring you, and no one expects nothing from you. You got a coach who's played in many play, who's coached in many playoff battles, right? And at the bare minimum, the Bucks get into the playoffs. They're the type of team you don't want to face because it's going to draw, it's going to drain a lot of energy and emotion to beat them. And by the time you get over them, it's like you felt like you just finished climbing a mountain. And now you got to go f climb a bigger mountain. And you just like, bro, I'm drained. I'm spent. I don't got it left in me anymore. And so what ends up happening is no matter what, nobody wants to see the Bucks. Because for me, what it is at the end of the day is those guys have forgot more than most people have ever learned. And even though Dame doesn't play a particular championship brand of basketball, hence why they brought Rondo in for their coaching staff to have those difficult conversations, to break down film to him from the lens of a distributor facilitating guard, guess what this means for the Bucks? They go in the playoffs and they got everything to gain and nothing to lose. Now, I won't be oblivious to the fact that there may be some, where there's smoke, there may be fire. If, in fact, now since we've now twice in a five-game cycle, in a five-game span, we've heard about him being traded, well, okay, he's going to get traded. Uh, 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 before the trade deadline, then guess what? Where could be the destinations? People are talking about Golden State. Kuminga would be fair compensation and whatever else the, 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 the Warriors want to give. Uh... Uh, what's the other? Houston Rockets is the other team which I feel like have suitable assets. They do want to fast track this rebuild and they do need one cornerstone piece. Who else than a guy who's won a championship, who's won an MVP, who's close with Hakeem Olajuwon, who has great night ties to the Houston community. Um, but I feel like 
if I hear this one more time, a broadcasting journalist needs to put their media credentials on the line and say he's going to get moved before the trade deadline. Otherwise, my thing is, the only other thing I can do believe is two, one of two things. Either the, the, the Bucks are trying to sell low, are trying to keep low expectations and over deliver, or this is a farewell tour warning. And everyone's like, enjoy it while it's here because I'm gone. And it's already been put in the cards. Because as we all know now, James Harden deal was way long in advance before we believe it. Minnesota and, and New York, they want to tell you it was a last section thing. No, they've been for years. The Carl Towns rumors were circulating and percolating for years. But for two, at least two years since Leon Rose took over, he negotiated that monstrosity of a $60 million per year plus contract. Uh, so, you know, only a big market team like New York can afford it. They're the ones who, at the end of the every year, have historically been the one to put the pot in the ownership deals to, to help franchises like Indiana afford their expenses when they don't gross enough at the end of the fiscal year. So, when you're looking at it, this is a kind of team right now that either is giving us a hint that he's going and it's like, yo, enjoy this last season even though there's not much to enjoy. Or they're really trying to play fool's gold. I don't know at this point anymore. My first belief when I first started catching wind that there might be problems a couple years ago, I'm thinking, well, Houston would be a great destination, especially when this year's NBA summer started with Kevin Durant to the Rockets by the major conglomerates. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, hell no, that's not happening. Not, 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 it, not, not when LeBron is allowing Bronny to go train with the Phoenix Suns as the only draft team besides the Lakers. There's no way he would do that if unless, you know, Kevin Durant was guaranteed to stay. But I did tell everyone that Tyus Jones was my, the most interesting free agent. And guess what? He ended up on Phoenix with Kevin Durant in the Phoenix Suns. Um, but I, I, I think like right now, there's a signal, but I can't tell what it is. It's either this is, you know, gearing up for a big time championship blindside by the Bucks, And I think Giannis is also up for a salary extension. Which is, um, you know, which is going to be tricky because only a few teams, I think, can even afford it at this point with the CBA the way it is and the shape that it is. So people will have to max contract, ma uh, match contracts, which I think, like I said, there's only like three teams that can do it. And one of them is the Rockets, who I feel like the Rockets or the Warriors. So, um, and if you're the Bucks, you know, you're not known for really luring free agents. So a Kuminga is just compensation, a, a deal based around Kuminga could be justified and then you got your own little bootleg LeBron remember Curry said I don't want to run with LeBron I want to beat him and so a guy like Giannis can fulfill that he's been rumored to the Bay for a long time I'm not sure where Joe Lacob stands in terms of continuing to spend money but there's no way that you're as currently constructed the, the, the Warriors need to be at least to keep Curry satisfied it needs to be respectable he needs to at least get to the second round he's not getting to the second round as they're currently constructed unless there's some heavy favor scheduling going on and because he's just not the kind of guy who can will his team on his own he's not even prime curry is going to do that i tell people this all the time he's not that kind of guy that crazy that people go top 10 all time and all listen you put him on charlotte they're not going to no playoffs so i tell people all the time he needs help if they, otherwise he's going his whole legacy is going to be exposed he's not going to just go out into the sunset being cool with being eliminated in the in, in the preliminary uh uh, whatever you call that tournament to get into the playoffs thing. No, that new bubble thing they got going on. That's not going to happen. Um, so to be determined, I know I said a whole lot to end it on a note of I'm not sure which direction this is steering, but I have put a lot on the table. Hopefully it brings some more light to everything. I'll try to do better next time. Utopians Global out.